Hi, I'm Simon Kröger and I'm the oil seed product management lead from DSV. We are now standing here on the field together with our new varieties, which carry the new Trade Foma blocker, which is our brand new and the best Foma resistance available on the market in Europe at the moment. So we are doing now a small video to introduce this new trade to you. So Foma stem canker is one of the most severe diseases in oilseed rape in Europe, but especially in UK, mainly in the western, southern and eastern parts of this country. So the estimated cost in terms of yield losses uh, from this disease is around 100 million pounds a year. There's a much bigger effect of the disease when there is an early infection in autumn uh, already because then the uh, disease has a longer time to spread in the plant and especially to damage also the plant base. So there are two strains of FOMA which uh, make damages and the most important one is Leptosferia maculans, while there is another strain which is called Leptosferia biglobosa, uh, where you also have some different spots on the leaves which are a bit smaller also, but at the moment it seems that this um, FOMA strain is causing less damage than the one that we are tackling here. So during autumn in times of uh, humid and warm conditions, we have ascospores, which come from the old stubbles of oil seed rape somewhere here around from old fields. Uh, they move on with the wind to the new plants of oil seed rape in the young fields and then they infect the plant leaves by infection through the stomata of the plants or also by diseased, uh, by damages that are already happening physically to the plants. So you usually see the infection after a period of around 130 degree days, which is around 14 to 20 days after the ascospores land on the young plants. So for maculans we have some broader uh, leaf spots, which are also not so much close from the surrounding leaf area, while for Biglobosa the spots are uh, smaller on the leaves and also are maybe more oblique, bit more separated uh, and especially at the spring when you have really the stem canker lesions then the um, Leptosferia maculans is more at, at the stem base while you can see the spots of Viclobosa more on uh, the top of the stem. So starting now in the leaf the pathogen goes along the leaf petiole to the stem and then to the stem base of the plant and in all this way he disturbs the tissue which is going around um, there in the plant so it interrupts the pathways of assimilation in the plant what leads to lower yields leads to damage and in a very severe case also leads to lodging uh, so that you could have severe yield losses at harvest uh, due to this pathogen. So there are basically two types of FOMA resistances. I think every modern variety that you have on your fields has a basic uh, multigenic resistance, which is quantitative and which is quite there, and which, which is the basis of all the varieties that we have. On top of that, we have qualitative resistances with R genes, so resistance genes, and uh, in these resistances, even it is possible to stack different re resistance genes uh, to another. So Foma Blacker is now an example of a stacking of two very important resistances. First one we have in the plants the very well-known RLM7 resistance, which is working still for certain strains of Foma, but for others it's not yet working anymore. So that's why we added a new Lab R1 resistance, which is a resistance coming from Australia and Canada. Uh, and together with these two resistances, we have a really great barrier against Foma in our leaves. So that's what happens also in the leaves with the new resistances is that around the first infection of FOMA there is built a ring of callose and lignin, uh, what finally is a too strong barrier for the FOMA to spread further in the plants. So you will not even see it then as a leaf spot on the plant.